John chapter 14 begins by Jesus asking the disciples to trust him. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. He then proceeds to tell them what lies ahead, preparing them for when he's no longer with them. Peter has already been adamant that he would lay down his life for him, for Jesus, only to be told by Jesus that he would do the opposite and deny him. Jesus talks about preparing a place for his disciples and promises to come back and take them there. But doubting Thomas wants to know the way and you can feel his anxiety building. To trust requires settling the heart and laying down your troubles, those things you don't understand and that evoke fear. Psalm 37, some several times, echoes Jesus' words to the disciples in saying, do not fret, and also trust in the Lord. In my work as a, a community Macmillan nurse, many times I observed that experiencing the unknown was worse than the worst known. Even when a patient was facing terminal illness, the relief in anxiety by addressing someone's pain or um, their financial worries or the need for a regular support visit was visible. Lack of understanding was also a regular cause for anxiety and stress. But calm explanation of the facts of both disease and treatment frequently allayed their fears. I think the disciples were in the middle of unknown. Jesus was trying to reassure the disciples before the event. He said, I am the way. But this was something they would not understand until after Jesus had gone to the cross, had died for their sins, risen again, eaten fish on the beach with them and ascended into heaven, after which they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, another counsellor, the spirit of truth, to live with them and be in them. Then Jesus' words of promise that I am in the Father, you are in me and I am in you, would make some sense to them. There were so many new concepts for the disciples to take on board. It's no wonder Jesus needed to calm their anxieties. How does it sit with you to have part of the Trinity living in you? Hmm. If anyone had tried to tell me when I was a nominal Christian about some of the ways that God would work and, his, and has worked in my life since, I came to know Jesus and received the Holy Spirit, I would have either dismissed what they were saying or thought they were totally wacky. But it's God who's in control. And remembering that makes a massive difference. Those disciples were on an enormous learning curve. Sometimes... No, some, beg your pardon. some years ago, when I lived in Eastbourne, there was a godly lady who came to the evening, ser evening church service with her son each week. On this particular Sunday, it was her 100th birthday. During the service, she was asked about her life. And one question was if there was a particular verse that had been important to her in her long life. The verse she gave was Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's amazing. I've always remembered 
that verse and frequently found the call to trust in the Lord in that verse to be tremendous strength in times of anxiety, fear and unknown. In a way, um, we're at an advantage today compared with the disciples. We have the scriptures. We know that Jesus died, but we know that he rose from the dead and sent his Holy Spirit to guide and strengthen us and make us more like Jesus. Somehow or other, however, we still find ourselves getting fearful and allowing our focus to come away from our all-sufficient God. In February this year, I decided to sell the flat in London that David and I had bought in 20, 2005. And uh, we'd let it out ever since. The plan to sell was motivated by the difficult times I've had with the tenants in the flat upstairs. This amounted to being motivated by fear. However, the flat went on the market and a few people looked round with some signs of interest. But it was all thwarted by the imminent impact of COVID-19. So we changed tack, put a lick of paint on the walls, did a few necessary jobs and returned it to the rental market. Two different people showed interest, but neither came to fruition. I made two trips down to London in close succession, connected with the situa connecting with the situa connected with the situation. And on the second one, I had a panic attack with palp palpitations, which are really horrible, at King's, Cro King's Cross Station. I was finding the situation very stressful. However, God had things in hand, but I had stopped trusting. Very shortly after that, Charlie turned up to look at the flat. He liked it, has a girlfriend who lives in the same street, so he knows the area, uh, was employed with a healthy income and applied. He moved in on lockdown day, 23rd of March, 2020. God's timing. Jesus is also telling us, telling his disciples, that they can ask him for anything in his name and he will do it. Do you think they understood this at all? Jesus was preparing them for the days ahead when they would move in the power of the Holy Spirit. The disciples were told to trust Jesus and we are told to trust him too. Again, in verse 27, Jesus reassures the disciples again. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. How do you cope when you are troubled and even afraid and can't understand what's going on? How does God reassure you and the Holy Spirit help you? Mm -hmm.